What's going on you guys? Jake Adams here for Reef Builders and uh, man, a really special coral popped up on the interwebs today that I just had to share with you in video format. I already wrote it up this morning into an article just about this shroom, but I felt like I could get a little bit more in, uh, in a video and reach some of the viewers and tell you a little bit more about what a jawbreaker shroom is in general, and then tell you why this is uh, the Purple Monster Jawbreaker is one of the best shrooms ever. So um, yeah, the color of this shroom is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I'm no longer surprised that corals can come up with these psychedelic colors that we've seen in chalice corals, in scalemias, um, some of the acanthophilias, and um, it's actually really satisfying to finally see it in a uh, mushroom, just something totally incredible. So, uh, you know, the jawbreaker, the, the shroom craze actually was kicked off not by the bounce shroom, but by the original jawbreaker style shroom. There's an original jawbreaker, and then there's jawbreaker style mushrooms. And uh, as far as we know, jawbreakers are a discosoma, but unlike most of the really common uh, discosomas that you might get uh, as a colony for like, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 bucks for, uh, with a pretty good color, uh, jawbreaker shrooms are thicker, uh, really, really colorful, um, and generally slow growing. So, uh, you know, one shroom will get kind of large and throw off some uh, little pups, as Anya likes to call them. Um, very sparingly. So, um, so yeah, the Jawbreaker Shroom first hit the scene uh, probably about six or seven years ago. Um, this is a beautiful, fleshy, thick polyp. That's uh, it's a like a Chevrolet orange, just really, really brilliant color. And um, it'll have some hints of like red splotches and some green splotches. And once in a while, you'll see some specimens that are showing uh, less orange and more green or more red. Um, and the jawbreaker shroom definitely has been in culture for a long time and now it is possible to get a uh, smaller specimen uh, you know without totally totally wrecking the bank um, so the jawbreaker shroom uh, started it off but since then we've seen a variety of different jawbreaker style mushrooms again these are more likely to be solitary uh, bigger thicker and especially really beautiful colored um, I've seen a lot of these in fish stores with without any carrying any names just set aside because they knew it was special and um, I've also seen them in the wild uh, pretty much where you'd expect them with no other shrooms in sight and again it'd be like two or three um, so the general color of most uh, jawbreaker style shrooms is uh, somewhere around red or orange uh, a little bit more rare would be kind of the green styles and um, I've seen a few of these at my local fish stores um, and online. So the second real big strain of uh, Jawbreaker style uh, Discosoma uh, was definitely the Eclectus. The Eclectus shroom popped up on our radar about two years ago. And it's hard to describe what color this thing is because it's uh, kind of a fluorescent metallic, a toxic yellow green with a um, bunch of red splotches that kind of irregular. Um, this is a beautiful shroom that I think uh, at the time was going for, uh, started at a thousand bucks for the one colony and went up to a thousand bucks a polyp. And I think eventually retail, retailed for two to $2,500. Um, I'm not sure how many of those have been put into culture, um, but we've seen other beautiful uh, jawbreaker style shrooms since then. Uh, Pacific East Aquaculture got a really cool batch of discosomas that had this like the great the gaudiest color with purple splotches mixed in and a brilliant green rim so that was a really fantastic strain. Um, more recently the uh, Aurora Borealis Jawbreaker um, I think it was shared by Sea Dwelling Creatures. This one was really interesting it was a single polyp and it was uh, channeling its inner discosoma with these stripes. So it was, uh, again, it was red, but the stripes through it were kind of green. So it comes like a Christmas style jawbreaker. Um, there, were, I think there was only one or two polyps of that. So I don't know if it went into culture or if it went into um, someone's private home collection. And, uh, but yeah, today is all about this crazy purple monster jawbreaker shroom. Um, we don't have that many pictures of it, but I gotta give three shout outs. One, Michael Vargas took these photographs of the purple monster jawbreaker. He saw this shroom at the home of Dat Nguyen. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Sorry, Dat, if I butchered it. Uh, but Dat is the owner of this particular polyp, and he got it from BSA Corals. And uh, he, I don't even care if the, cor uh, the the images are juice. I don't care if the colors are juice because I can look at this photograph and tell you like, yeah, there is definitely some way that you're going to get those colors to come out. Having seen other jawbreakers in person, in real life, 
Um, I am not surprised if this coral, look, uh, the pictures look pretty close to real life or if they were juiced. But, um, but what's really, really exciting is like, we already know that this room is gonna be so expensive um, the, the discussions around the five digit range for a single polyp, there's only one. Um, but that two things, when a coral has that much value, it's almost certainly going to be invested in, not by a private collector, but usually by some coral grower, some coral farmer. Um, then they're gonna put that thing into intensive culture uh, so that they can grow some more and make them available in the aquarium hobby. So hopefully in uh, three to five years, we might be able to consider uh, picking one up uh, again, without a uh, second mortgage or a selling car or whatever. Um, but what's really cool is the colors on this shroom are fantastic. And uh, we've seen shrooms and polyps in a variety of different colors. And what's cool about this, this shroom, like I was started to say, is that if there's one with these colors, you know that there's more and there's gonna be more colors, more patterns in between a standard jawbreaker and what we're seeing with this particular uh, purple monster jawbreaker shroom. So um, let me know what you think of the uh, supposed $10,000 price tag on this coral. But again, even if it was $3,000, you know, it's out of reach for, for any of us, but like I, Used to have a really bad gut feeling when corals went for a lot of money, but over time my attitude has changed because when a coral uh, is very expensive, that almost guarantees that it will be uh, uh, cultured, it will be propagated, it will be shared. But even if this shroom, uh, if it dies for some reason, just knowing that colors like this exist is very, very exciting because it's not the only one, it came from the ocean, there will be more, and the exciting possibility that this is not even as good as it gets. You know, every time we think this is the best one ever, this is the best one ever, of which I am probably the most guilty, um, the, the natural reef, the coral reefs always have a way of coming back around and showing us something that is nicer, better, more incredible, etc., etc. So let me know what you think about the Purple Monster Jawbreaker. Are you a fan of Jawbreakers? You have a bunch of shrooms in your tank. Um, I'm kind of currently on a Ghani kick, so uh, my shrooms are kind of limited to Recordias, especially the big Yumas. Um, shout out to Gala Aquatica for really turning me on to those. Um, so yeah, this is just a really, really fun story. I'm going to try to bust out a lot more of these short, thoughtful videos uh, this week. So definitely stay tuned, subscribe, tell me what you think about this room in the comments, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.